Hello and welcome back to the Napoleon Assist, an instalment number three of this mini series on Napoleon Total War and the way in which you can try and compute a war game, the Napoleonic era. I'm joined once again by my good friend and trusty companion, Josh Proven, master of adventures in history land, one of my favourite people to own a ponytail and the author of Bullock's Grain and Good Madeira, all about the Maratha and Jack campaigns out in India during the Napoleonic era. Josh, welcome back to the Napoleon Assist. It's great to see you again. Why are we kind of slightly amused about what's about to unfold today? Well, you never know exactly what's going to happen when you do a multiplayer in, in Napoleon Total War. Uh, and when you pick a map like the Lini map, um, well, a lot of things can go wrong and a lot of things can go right and generally you cannot predict <laughs> what is going to happen but uh to say the least uh that is sort of that sort of sums up our experience here playing this 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 map this this did not go how i planned it i have to be uh be honest about that i mean the first thing to say is that i was expecting to defend as the prussians and instead i got the attacking side so in terms of the orientation this is meant to be the south side obviously they haven't gone for a an accurate representation of Ligny because the complexities of making that happen are, are just too vast. Um, but this is the south side, if you will, of the river. This is the French side. Here is the, the high ground. Um, and then what I like about this map is that you've got a lot of bridges, what should in theory be a lot of choke points, and you've got houses to defend them. But there's a very um, simple reason why things don't play out as they should. If anything, I think perhaps there are too many bridges on the Lini map. It's a little bit too complex, there's a little bit too much going on. Um, I don't know what your sense of that is, Josh, before we uh, start looking at deployments. I mean, it's, it's, it's very much sort of a flavour of Lini rather than Lini itself. Uh, the the Lean Rook uh, was not as robust as this river. You could, uh, I believe, very quickly wade across it or jump across it and or put a plank across it and walk across it that way uh, rather than having this many actual bridges to have to sort of negotiate in the actual battle. You don't really read about a lot of people crossing bridges at the Battle of Lini actually. Um, so yeah, it is slightly overcomplicated in that sense. Um, but you have high ground, you have a river and you have Sort of built up areas and that is what they're going for and what it does is it, it, it presents a very difficult map to play uh, whether you're attacking or defending and to be honest when you're doing multiplayer whether you're attacking or defending shouldn't really matter really because it's much more about the opportunities you see in the opposing side when it's a tactical thing because you can't actually war game out the actual battle on these these things, unless you pre-agree to do as much, do as much as you can to uh, to follow the, the actual course of events. This is a really important point, actually, that we haven't picked up on. If you're trying to do an accurate simulation of a battle uh, from this period, you really shouldn't use a um, a computer game uh, to do it because it doesn't lend itself. I mean there are always going to be limitations on realism these games are designed to entertain more than anything else and that's what you see here you know you've got something that as you say is an imitation of Lini. it's by no means an accurate representation and you're never going to get something as kind of minutely accurate as you know a representation of what was Lini like back then and, and so on um it, it does it quite simply doesn't seek to do that what you can do, though, is some nice little grouping, which is what's happening on the screen. Now I'm making up some, I'm making some decisions, some fairly cack-handed decisions, I think it's fair to say, in terms of how I'm going to group them. I'm sort of vaguely contemplating having a reserve, which is what's happening here. Um, so I've got some reserve cavalry, some Ulans and some Dragoons. I've got some out on the left flank. Um, I've got some fusiliers sort of in the center. I've got ish a brigade, if you like, of infantry sort of vaguely forming here. Um, it's it's all very 
ill coordinated i think it is the um the, the mood my end which you're going to see then has a knock-on effect in how the rest of the uh, the battle plays out but my philosophy at this point is i'm going to move into the center of the town i'm going to dominate the bridge i might establish a forward position up here um and, and then i'm going to keep josh guessing in terms of where I might go next. So I've got some artillery down here, which I'm gonna move forward to the river, knowing that he can't cross the river. Um, and I'm gonna use that to lay down a base of fire. At this point, I haven't really considered the fact that there is high ground up here, which will be really, really, really crucial in terms of what follows. Um, I'm also sort of thinking, well, look, there's a, there's a bridge here. I'm going to need to vaguely cover that in case he makes some big flanking maneuver. I'm also aware that there are opportunities to perhaps push up uh, up in this direction and outflank him. Uh, Josh, what are you doing at, at this stage in proceedings? What was your I'm not philosophy? A... <laughs> My philosophy I'm playing is the French. Um, I'm not intending to follow any playbook. Here we are. There's my boys. Uh, mes enfants and my battery of the convention immediately opening fire from the high ground there. Um, there are a couple of things to remember about the linear map if you're on this side of it. First of all is that hill is born of artillery and can dominate the heights on the other side. Uh, second, there, are, there is dead ground to the rear and the entire position to the left of that hill is terribly exposed to your cannons. So keep the uh, keep it cavalry off it by any means. The other thing is that I know the sort of the wider spaces to your right is going to allow you to move troops that way and prepare to attack my left, which is entirely in the air. There's nothing to defend over on that side. And um, so I'm expecting you to attack that side. And for that reason, everything is very distanced. There's nothing firm because my philosophy in social war games against a human being is that you make your dispositions and then when the game starts, you make them again, depending what your opponent does. So at this point, I'm looking at what you're doing and making some small adjustments and then, then sort of cautiously pushing troops where I might want to have them as the battle progresses. Yes, um, I'm not sure if I swore when I saw that you had uh, the the convention <laughs> battery on the high ground, but it did rather mess up my plans. I still wasn't expecting it to be quite as key as it was. But what I decided to do is throw a bit of a dummy. So what I'm trying to do at this point is draw Josh away. And so I send forward this cavalry kind of double unit. Um, they Josh responds, but you can see straight away uh, on this side that Josh is opening up with his battery of the convention on some of these buildings and it's taking its toll. Um, already those buildings are, are starting to crumble and so I very quickly got to come back to the center, divert my attention away from the left flank um, and, and do something about this situation here. Josh is not committing men to this fight, he's just letting the artillery do its thing, destroy the houses and um, ruin my day basically. Uh, yeah, and, I mean, as you can see, I, I make the, these boys pull back across the river. Meanwhile, Josh is responding in such strength on this side that in a minute you're going to see me go, OK, yeah, that's done the trick. I've pulled some of his forces out. Um, now I'm going to pull them back so that they don't get cut off. So there's lots going on my end. Josh, what are you thinking? The second, I'm still worried about my left flank. I'm worried that I'm going to get sort of bogged down on the right by sending that brigade to follow you, but I know it's in enough strength that it can technically come back if need be. I'm secretly hopeful, to be honest, that I can, I can get them onto your flank, to be honest, to distract you. Um, I'm glad you're putting troops in buildings because that means I can shoot at them with artillery. And this is, as our good friend Andrew Dorman will tell you in Total War Games, don't put the troops in buildings when there are cannons around because they will die. <laughs> it really was quite that yeah. simple. Um, and then here's an interesting bit here. My skirmishers come down to attack your batteries on the low ground, but they get really badly mauled. Um, so things are getting interesting. 
this is a phrase that he does like to use when we play these kinds of scenarios. He just goes, ah, oh, interesting, interesting. It's the most passive, passive aggressive I've ever known. Um, <laughs> yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm slightly concerned that you came forward in such strength on this side, uh, but you've positioned them well so they can very easily move across into your centre because they're right by that bridge. Um, and so I start to make what ended up being an ultra predictable play that then just went catastrophically wrong. So I'm now eyeing up the right flank, sort of observing this, as you said, this big open space over here, thinking, well, I can very quickly establish myself over here, then I can use that to push in whilst he has had to deploy so far on his left. So I kind of feel like I've strung you out quite well and that this could be anyone's game. And you can see that at the bottom, you know, the the balance bar, which is this blue red thing at the bottom, is still kind of in my favour. So I am the blue in this sort of bottom section of the mini map that you can see in the top right. And the feeling of the AI, the, the monitoring system, is that I still have the advantage. But I have taken some losses uh, and it's not feeling particularly, particularly easy, shall we say. Uh, as a farmhouse sits at 98% damage awaiting the final salvo, which will probably kill all of my troops inside. And there we go. <laughs> um, oh no, some made it out. Two made it out, and then they promptly run away. Yeah, so at this I point, myself totally here, but I was suddenly, when you drew your cavalry right across back to your hill, I decided that I would push that. And so committed my right to this large and rather risky, it has to be said, move to try and get them onto this second island bit here. Across the well, the trouble is, we kind of went simultaneously. So you moved your left in as I moved my right in. Um, you can see them sort of starting to form up and move forward here. And I think that was the problem for me in how this played out, because it meant that all I had left was the reserve to push in to plug the gap over here. Um, not least because my centre had taken a bit of a pasting from your Grand Battery of the Convention. There was nothing that I could reasonably do about that. Yes, I had mm -hmm. the artillery. Yes, they're trying to fire on it. But realistically, you've got the high ground, you've got the advantage, and this battery, for all intents and purposes, is in the wrong place. Um, so it was a, a smart move on your side. I then go full suicidal because you've moved a unit forward with just enough space that I reckon I can take them before. And, and you're right. Your, I had, I've your, been distracted by doing something on the left and I had, uh, they just stand there and get attacked. And I thought, oh, okay, I've blown it um, because he's just got his, you just got your cavalry and hit me. Um, so all Look like morale. Look at the morale. All, and this is the French, isn't it? It's just wonderful to play as the French. <laughs> but uh, the Spanish would have run away by now. But I did have another cavalry unit nearby. And if I, as long as I don't choke and draw the infantry back, as long as I get them across the bridge and form square, I'm okay. Because you've only got two units of cavalry here. Let me just, so th this, that side was all about the morale element. Um, and I couldn't believe it as I watched and just saw your, your French cavalry just stand there and just take it and, and rally. So then on this side, so I've moved these men up. Um, they do seem to be facing in the wrong direction. Uh, if I'm not too badly mistaken. Yes, they are. I, for the life of me, I don't know quite what's happened here. Um, so I'm moving up the, the horse artillery. So I'm thinking, well, look, I can keep him occupied, maybe stall him um, in terms of the attack on this side. But then I've also had to try and do something to keep you busy. So I've sent in more horse. Um, and this is the thing with this game. You do have to have eyes everywhere simultaneously because I've sent in my reserve cavalry and it, it's all gone very, very, very horribly wrong um, because they didn't succeed in buying any time. They just died effectively. Um, and by the time I've got over here to have a look at this and how that's going, I then flick my eyes over to this flank and 
start moving them forwards. And in what felt like no time at all as we were playing this, um, they were all dead. <laughs> it was generally this thing of, where have they all gone? Uh, I, and like I say at the beginning, I had been expecting you to attack from the through the right, and the my troops facing your guys over there do a little dance with themselves as I reorganize them to face you coming across that bridge, because basically everybody was originally deployed in order to just sort of tease you and slow you down. I've got two regiments of cuirassiers over there in the dead ground, quite safe out of artillery. I've also got an extra horse battery down there and three regiments of infantry. So I'm feeling fairly okay with defending this flank. Um, but in so taking control of this flank, like you're saying, you need to have eyes all the time. I'm losing control of my right flank, which is now mm. sort of daringly pressing across the other bridge to attack the high ground, because I'm thinking maybe I can get a pincer thing going here. Because the other thing about this map is never cross the central bridge. This is too well defended. That's why yeah. I'm leaving it to you. Uh, so at this stage, I'm sending in the reserve infantry because it's pretty much the only thing I can do to try and hold off. So I'm doing the inverse of, of what you're doing. I'm sort of trying to stabilize things here so that you don't end up cutting behind me. And in the process, what I'm absolutely not doing is paying any attention to the fact that you've gone on the offensive to the point where I didn't, I, until we rewatched this, I didn't know how these men ended up just seemingly vaporizing. <laughs> um, which is why I keep kind of flicking over here because I'm very curious to see how long it here takes. Here come the Carassiers. So it is as simple as you charged in with your Carassiers and presumably I wasn't firing canister as I should have been. And the rest, as they say, is history. Um, so over on that flank is a story of cavalry. And this is where you start to see why this game ends up being quite fun to play, but also quite a challenge. Um, but your, your Fusiliers are not happy, are they? Are they no, because the I've, I've now lost complete control of what's going on over here. I don't, I've not been looking at it. And my guys are not being commanded. They're just sitting here. The cavalry should have charged by now. My cavalry should have hit you here. Yes. They're just Brilliant. sitting here doing nothing. It's wasted opportunities here. Um, because I have repulsed you on your right flank, and I'm thinking, mm. now's the time, boys. We have to push through the center, and I have to get people moving. But this now you're just going to crush me pretty, pretty much, because you're just coming. I can't stop this. And you have cavalry as well still? Yep. Yep, so I've got a little bit of cavalry left. I've sent in the, the general staff um, because I'm getting slightly desperate in terms of needing to achieve something to stabilize on this flank. And lo and behold, I sort of do. Uh, you then charge in with cavalry. I finally cavalry. see <laughs> that things are going badly and it's too late. Uh, so I don't manage to respond in time with my dragoons. Um, what happens at this stage? There isn't a lot left. I think that although my right flank is my right flank attack is sort of so just sort of disintegrated, you've taken too many losses in the center of the right, and I still have enough men to attack. I think is is pretty much the story at the end game story here. Yeah, you've got a lot of very fresh units at this stage. Um... Uh, and now you start to pull back your horse. And, and this is the point where I'm sort of half thinking, maybe there's just a slither of hope. And so I start to try and reform the line. Um, so I'm pulling back mm -hmm. the fusiliers. Um, I'm quite cross that these men ended up crossing the river in the first place, because I definitely don't remember sending them off to do mm -hmm. that. You're obviously going to cross the river unopposed. My thinking now is get to the heights, reform, use the strongest infantry regiment to hold this bridge. And uh, if I can just get them to form square here, um, uh, so I form them in square and then I decide that's not close enough, you can maneuver around that. So I stick them back into line and 
I move them across. If I can use those to hold off here, then perhaps I can defeat your oncoming infantry in echelon as they arrive. So I'm sort of trying to think almost sort of what would Napoleon do in this <laughs> situation, um, knowing that there's such a tiny, tiny margin of hope. Uh, my general is nowhere. I don't know what he's doing over What's there. Doing? I really don't. Um, oh, you're pressing very heavily. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't realize you were pursuing with cavalry I here. Yeah, I saw you pulling troops out of the town. And I figured that means I have to press the attack there because that's sort of ready-made confusion for me. And I have two units of Carassiers to hand. Um, so I'm at this point, yeah, at this point, I'm thinking the left flank is, is ultra secure. You know, there's no way he's getting across that bridge. Nothing he can do there. Okay, let's focus. What's happening on the right? Oh hell, everyone's on the right <laughs> is is the 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 thinking here and also of course they're too far away really um you you've pretty much got around my flank um i think i went on a suicidal charge with the general staff thinking well maybe his morale might mean that i can push through some of these seraciers doesn't work out that way um it they're getting my infantry units aren't supporting each other effectively which is what you should do if you're playing this game you should have overlapping fields of fire I here's a curious thing. Eyes. This is bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, for the life of me, I do not understand how this happens. Uh, Josh actually said to me at this stage, what are you doing watching the left flank when you know there's stuff <laughs> happening on the right? And I basically told him, look, it's all over. I just want to break <laughs> this unit. Watch this, folks. They run away. The Lancers. It's bizarre. It's just bizarre. Were they Lancers? Shouldn't have, I, I don't, yeah. The Lancers. Okay. But they shouldn't have broken that square. No, they shouldn't. But the I don't even know why they were charging. Advantage. I don't even know why they did were charging. Did you not order them in? I, I did order them in, but I, I, I must have seen that you were in a square. I, oh, I, I think I saw you moving the infantry to the bridge. And then I charged, but then you must have formed the square. And then no, I, just... I think I left them there. I honestly think I left them there. Anyhow, um, it's an utter crushing humiliating defeat for me uh, <laughs> really quite amusing uh, but you know well won on josh's part uh, kind of read the terrain far better than than i certainly did let us know your thoughts down below folks you know what would you have done differently am i just an utter blithering idiot do you think that it's just that the French are overpowered in the game, which is the excuse I might attempt to clutch to desperately um, in the attempt to um, massage my thoroughly bruised ego. Join us again very soon because we will be back for the final instalment of a kind of internet or digitally wargaming the Napoleonic Wars. This has been the Napoleon Assist. If you would like some of the more historical content, some of the to you know, dive into some of the history behind what we've been playing out today, check out the main show. That's the podcast, The Napoleon Assist, over on, well, pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. If you would like to know a little bit more about the two of us, you can find me on Twitter at ZWhiteHistory. Josh, you are on Twitter at Land of History. And that's right. Happy uh, to drop by. And join us again very soon when we will have another installment of these where we will look at how you fight a naval scenario. Until then, I'm Zach White. This has been the Napoleon Assist. Take care of yourselves, my friends, and we'll see you again very soon.